Hey, welcome everybody. This video is all about Next.js XML sitemaps. I'll walk you through creating multiple sitemaps manually and dynamically. To tie everything together, I'll show you how I created a sitemap index. For websites with only a few sitemaps, you can submit them manually to search engines. However, if your site is large and continuously expanding, it's more efficient to create a sitemap index file that consolidates all of your sitemaps. Please note that this guide is a brief overview and I'll be copying and pasting much of the code provided. And any ideas of how we can make this better are much appreciated. Hey, welcome everybody. For this video, I'm gonna be using a personal side project that I've been working on in order to learn Next.js. To start with, just as a side note, make sure that you add your sitemap inside your robots.txt file. All you need to do is add sitemap column and then your full URL and then slash sitemap.xml. Once you're done with this, let's close it and let's have a look at how we can create multiple sitemaps. Now, the easiest way to create multiple sitemaps is literally by doing it inside the route. For example, if I want to create a global sitemap, I would do sitemap, xml and then from here i would add a normal sitemap you can add it manually like this or you can add it with code which is what we need in order to create multiple ones and make them dynamic so this is a standard one and this is one done with code both examples are available on the official documentation obviously when you add one with code you need to change the file so we need to change it to js or ts here and as you can see everything is looking good if i was to save this and running so npm run dev let me zoom in on this we should be able to see the sitemap now so localhost slash sitemap.xml and all sitemap should be working as expected now if i wanted to create another one i can literally copy this go to another route so let's say inside my products here lenses i'm gonna create another one so sitemap.js in this case and then paste the sitemap that you want and then you should be able to find it by going to the route here which in my case is camera lenses so lenses slash sitemap.xml and as you can see we're still getting the sitemap if i update this you will see that it changes well it should change here we go when i refresh and we are good to go so now we have multiple sitemaps now there isn't much point of having multiple sitemaps like this unless you have more than 5,000 records per sitemap and you want to split them technically speaking i believe that you could just have one sitemap for all your links and i don't really see a problem with that except obviously when you reach the limit you need to spread them out and this is what i'm going to be showing you in the next part so if we close this and this and if we go to the official documentation here where it has under sitemap and then generate multiple sitemaps. If you have a look inside here, they basically have a function generate sitemap, which allows you to fetch the total number of products and calculate the number of sitemaps needed in order to generate them dynamically. So essentially you go to your database and if you have more than 50,000 products, you then start creating other sitemaps. So your sitemap will be called zero, your second sitemap will be called one and then two and three and so on. So this is how it works. Let's try this example super quickly. And I'm actually using MongoDB for this project, but you can also see here that they're using SQLs. So you can select the ID and date from products where ID between the start, which is 50,000 and the end, which is also 50,000. So let's copy this first part just for the example. And let's go back to the lenses sitemap here i'm gonna open it and then inside here let's remove this and let's just try it out super quickly we basically still want to use the same sitemap function as before and we want to pass the id from here so zero one two three and four depending on how many numbers we generate from the database which i'm going to show you in a second as well now let me zoom a little bit more and since i'm using mongodb i need to input my connection to database string here and then we can start by connecting to the database. So let's, we are connecting to my database here and my database is actually called database for this. And then we need to set the limit. So inside this comment, as you see, so Google's limit is 50,000 euros per sitemap. So we want to start with 50. So basically we times the ID by this number and then we should be able to create overflow and create more sitemaps. In order to do this in MongoDB, you will do something like this. 
So I'm creating a console with products and then I'm going to the collection of lenses and I want to find all of them and I want to skip the start and then I want to limit the amount that I'm getting by the limit here and that's pretty much it. Now we need to live through this product and in fact this is wrong so let's do it let's do as data let's say now we need to loop through the data that we're getting from the database and i'm gonna call it const product we're looping through and we're basically creating the same sitemap structure as before the url and from the database i'm getting the slug i'm getting the last modified from the database and those two are manually hard coded in here which is absolutely fine and now we just need to return the products and we should be good to go the product in this case and we should be good to go if i save this and if i go back to the browser here we are under lenses let's press enter and then you see we're getting not found now technically speaking this is generating the sitemaps for us and the euros for the sitemap in development and prediction are slightly different so since we're in development right now in order to visit the first sitemap generated we can go to sitemap.xml and then slash and then the id in this case zero and then we're getting all first sitemap as you can see and then i don't think that i have enough items for the second one but it should be generated anyway so if i go to one we're getting another sitemap two three and then four we should get not found because we don't have any more of course if i add another one that should also work so this is four and if I refresh, as you can see, we're getting a sitemap, but we don't have anything inside purely because I don't have that many records. If I was to do maybe a smaller number, I'll probably have enough to generate more sitemaps. And maybe we can do that. Maybe we can do, let's say, 10 just for the example here. And now if I save it, hopefully, as you can see, we're getting 10 items in each sitemap here. Now let's have a look at this in production super quickly. So what I'm going to do is close the terminal here and do npm run uh, build. And let's have a look into this. And I'm going to speed up the process here because it's going to take a little bit of time. All right, now that our website is built, if you go to lenses here, you will see that we're getting lenses, sitemap, and then the URL has changed. So the prediction url is going to be sitemap slash and then the number and then xml so in this case let's grab one like so and let's do npm run start and then if i go to the and then if i go to the browser here and if i change the url we should be oops we do need lenses so we should be able to see it so zero one and i don't know how many we have but as you can see they're working which is absolutely perfect. Also, as you can see here, it says that these are pre-rendered as static HTML, but I believe that you can also revalidate them whenever you like, just by putting uh, somewhere around here, you can just put revalidate, and this is gonna be revalidating them every hour, but obviously you might not wanna do that. It's really up to you. Now that we have our sitemap working and everything, let's close this and let's have a look at how we can do it through the database. So I'm going to do npm run dev super quickly and then let's change this so we have an example from the database. A database example would go something like this. It would be fairly simple again. So I'll connect to my database. Then as it says on the official documentation, we need to fetch the total number of products and calculate the number of sitemaps needed. So I'm fetching the total number of products in here. So total products is equals a weight DB collections of lenses. And I'm, I'm just getting the count of the document, which is cool. And then the next thing that we need to do, I'm going to paste in here is calculate the number of sitemaps needed. In this case, we need five with one, two, three, four zeros. So we need the total products that we get from the database divided by the product of sitemap here then we can just generate an array like so so let me put that back generate an array of the sitemap objects like so and then the last thing that we need to do is to return the sitemap and now if i zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit better now we actually run in development so that's fine now this should also be working because it comes from the database this time found and this is purely because we need to go we're in development mode so sitemap.xml0 and we need to remove the xml 
yep okay this is working it's coming from the database as you can see all right so we do have a sitemap generated dynamically but if you wish to submit them to google well you can go to sitemaps and you can submit them one by one if you wish to if your website is fairly large and is generating more sitemaps by the day let's say or by the month then you might not want to do that and you might want to create a sitemap index and basically the name says it all we're basically creating one sitemap index that has links to all the sitemaps and this can basically improve organization hopefully search engine accessibility and scalability when it comes to just generating more and more sitemaps now you can only submit 500 sitemap index files and as i said earlier a sitemap may have 50,000 lock tags so let me show you how we can build that so in this case let's close this this is all working absolutely fine let's close it and now let's create our index so our index can be created pretty much anywhere in the app directory here in fact we can create a, a sitemap like this if you want and then you can plug in all of your sitemaps in here in fact if you want to uh, it's up to you but what we need to do is to create another route so and this route is going to be called sitemap of course you can call it whatever you like i'm going to call mine index and then this is going to be dot xml now i know that this looks a little bit weird but what we can do is use the route handlers from next.js so i'm going to create a new file and this is going to be called route dot js okay let's close this and now let's start the first thing that i'm going to do is to import the next.js response from next server and then my database connection now this is going to be fairly similar to what we've already done so i'm going to paste the code in here so this is going to calculate the output sitemap urls example sitemap one two three and so on in a list of links but this is essentially the same as before we're connecting to the database fetching the total number of products here we are calculating how many sitemaps this is going to generate generating an array of sitemap objects in here and we are good the next thing that we need to do is the function that is going to create this page into an xml page is going to basically change the content type to application xml now i'm gonna copy and paste this as well sorry about that but it's just quicker to do and i'm gonna give you all the code as well and essentially let me see if i can put it all in one here we go so essentially we do export async function get and then inside here we have a try and catch inside here we have we are waiting for the result from generate sitemap which is our function here and then we're combining static and dynamic sitemaps so what i was thinking is if you made a sitemap let's say your main sitemap is here where you have your home about uh, faq and so on you can do this and add it manually or if you have one under let's say i have my products here you can also do this add them manually no problem but the rest we can add as dynamic because we don't know how many uh, sitemaps we're gonna have we need to calculate this first and then put them in here as links in that if that makes sense so i'm kind of logging this i need to remove that and then basically we need to build the xml which i'm going to show you in a second and this is returning the next response with application xml and that's pretty much the important stuff so now let me show you how we can build the sitemap index so if i copy this function and paste it inside here let's have a look into it uh essentially we're just going to build an xml file here with the version the encoding and then we start with the sitemap index and inside here is where we put the sitemap and the location for the links and this is why i'm inserting the links so if i save this hopefully everything is going to work and we need to go to sitemap underscore index.xml so sitemap underscore index.xml and as you can see we're getting sitemap.xml or first one that we've added manually if you wish to that's why i've done it and then we have another one that we've added manually and then this one is actually generated so let's say the, the problem is that i don't have enough products in my database and that's why it's spitting only one let's say we put 100 so now if i save this and if i refresh my sitemap yeah okay i don't have that many either so let's go to 10 let's go to 10 and then refresh okay now i have a couple of sitemaps that i can visit so all of those sitemaps we can technically visit but the url is set to the prediction obviously so if i was to visit this now it shouldn't work because we're currently in development mode but if i switch to the prediction so i'm gonna yeah let's close this 
and then let's do npm run build it's gonna take some time to build so i'm gonna speed up this process and then our submap should be generated somewhere around here here it is i think lenses and we only have one which is absolutely fine i think i changed the number to the original number so let's go to sitemap 0.xml oh we need to i've built the project but i need to run the project so npm run start and it's starting and we should be good to go um lenses i map zero oh okay sorry i've messed up the uh url so it's lenses site map zero and as you can see we have all site map working and if i go to our index site map so site map underscore map underscore index this is also working which is fine and we do have our main site map inside here as well do we yeah we do so this is also going to be working as well site map dot xml if you need to and that's pretty much it i'm probably going to work on this a little bit more and see how i'm going to do it for this website i'm hoping that this is going to help somebody out i'm going to put all of the code in my blog and that's pretty much it i hope that you found this useful consider liking this video subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in the next one bye